Hello everyone, back shooting into the second summer 2016 seasonal model update. So we did the first uh, summer model update last month in March. It was a mixed bag. The models were very split between, um, well, some of them were going for a fairly decent summer. Some of them were going for really quite a poor summer. And uh, there was also a trend within all of that um, variability uh, for the idea that there could be maybe drier conditions earlier on and then a deterioration in the latter part of the summer. Uh, but as I say, a lot of variability in that first update that we did back in March. We'll have a look and see what the second update is showing in a second. We've got 10 long range models to get through. We're short of one. We haven't got APEC. And that's just because I'm doing the video a little bit earlier this month, uh, just because of the way the calendar has uh, has uh, conspired against us, really, it means that um, I've had to do, because uh, it's Sunday the 1st of May next Sunday, so it means I've had to do the second summer update uh, this week, and it's just a little bit too early for uh, APEC to be on stream this month, but we've got all the other models, um, the first couple will just be covering the early summer period uh, from May to July, but then the rest will cover the full summer period, so we'll see what they're showing in a second. Before I get on with that, just to say about the ads, there's links to articles on all of the pages. Have a browse through widgets and click through the links if there's any articles that you're interested in. Thanks very much for doing that. There's video ads on most of the pages. They open up in the content when you watch them. They'll close back up again. It does help to pay for gasworthies.com. Uh, you can see most of these uh, long-range models for yourself. You go to the links page. There's links to a lot of them, not all of them, on the links page, but most of the long range models are on the links page. So you can go and see these charts. It's going to be quite a long video, so you can't watch it all in one sitting. Don't worry. You can come back and watch it whenever you want at Gazza Vids. And also later on, on the Summer Updates page, where this video will be kept indefinitely, you will be able to uh, read a written summary of this as well. So if you haven't been able to watch the video, if you haven't watched the video, I suppose you won't be hearing my announcement. But say you've only watched some of it and you haven't had time to watch all of it, and you don't want to watch all of it, you can read the written summary and you'll be able to see uh, what's been going on in terms of a written uh, version. Right, uh, I better get on with the video. I think I've gone on for too long, as it is. Um, so uh, just say later on there'll be an update for the May Day Bank Holiday Weekend. Uh, that'll be coming up this evening on the website. Right, let's get on with the Russian model. And this is the... Uh, temperature probability from the long range model from Russia for May to July. This doesn't cover the full summer period yet. We'll have a full summer period uh, when we do next month's update. But um, first of all, we start off with temperature probability. And look at this. The model is going for a warmer than average summer. We've, in most red colours, that means that the probability uh, from the model is uh, that we're going to have temperatures above average this summer. The precipitation probability comes out uh, like this. So it's very close to average, actually. But um, if we take Western Europe, perhaps, uh, as a more general uh, area, so covering this um, area, maybe you could say that, that Western Europe and Northwest Europe is hinting to be a little bit below normal in terms of the probability with precipitation. But uh, it's a very, very weak signal. And overall, I think it's fair to say there's no real uh, signal there for precipitation. But clearly quite a strong signal for a warmer than average May to July. Let's have a look at the JMA next. Now, of course, we did JMA, uh, the JMA free monthly update earlier in the month. Um, and on that update, we had a look at all of the free months individually. So, again, this covers May, June and July. I don't have time because I've got all these other models to get through. I don't have time to go through all of the stuff that we can see with the JMA. So what we're going to do is just look at the free monthly uh, anomaly. So I'll have a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly for the next three months. Remember, this is taking us from May to July 1st of all. And overall, the three months sees a ridge down to the south. And the jet stream probably coming through the country a little bit to the north, uh, rather like that. The temperature, uh, the temperature anomaly for the next three months comes out close to, or perhaps seems to have been a little bit cooler than average. So a bit of a difference there between the JMA and the uh, CFS V2. And then in terms of precipitation, that's coming out generally 
a little bit drier uh, than average, perhaps a little bit wetter in the north. Remember, that's because the jet stream is running through, particularly the northern part of the country, a bit like that. Uh, what was very apparent from the JMA, three month the update, though, when we went in depth into this, not to show with charts, uh, but what we did become apparent in that update is that there is a signal here for a front-loaded uh, warm dry summer and then it all goes wrong for July so May and June look, did look fairly reasonable particularly June if I remember right um, but we get to July and there's a very uh, clear and obvious deterioration taking place turning much cooler and wetter in July so um Keep that in mind, these three monthly anomalies aren't necessarily representative of uh, each of the individual three months because July did show a very big switch. If you want to know more, you can find the link to the JMA uh, model on the links page. OK, let's have a look at the uh, Brazilian model next. And the rest of the models we see are going to be covering the full summer period. So this is the uh, 500 bit of our height anomaly for June, July and August. This covers the full uh, summer. And this one always a bit different uh, because most 500 mm of our heights, blue will, charts blue will uh, represent low pressure and um, yellow, orange, red will represent high pressure. This one flips it around. So uh, blue here is representing high pressure and green, yellow, um, yellow, orange, red, pink, uh, those colours are representing low pressure. What we see uh, for the summer anom anomaly is that there's a fairly big ridge here across Scandinavia and um, hinting perhaps at lower pressure out in the Atlantic. But it does look like the ridge across Scandinavia is dominating here. So this would be, uh, well, it could be quite a warm summer, actually, that with high pressure centred over Scandinavia, winds could be in from the east. And uh, that could be a fairly warm direction uh, once you get through into the summer. So the temperature anomaly here is coming out above average. A warmer than average summer is being seen. Uh, by the Brazilian model. And if you have a look at precipitation, again, it's a very weak signal, but maybe overall hinting at being a little bit uh, wetter than average in the North Sea, elsewhere near North. That could be maybe because there's a risk of thunderstorms um, moving up from the south. Remember, we've got this ridge here, so that could be pulling up southerly, southeasterly winds, which whilst warm, could trigger thunder. That's quite an unusual anomaly from the uh, Brazilian model, but I think it could be really quite a warmish summer if that was uh, to come off. Can Sips next. Of course, we did Can Sips uh, Sunday, or was it Can Sips Saturday, Saturday um, earlier in the month. <coughs> Again, I don't want to dwell on this too much, but what we're going to look at is the temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies um, broken down into monthly periods. So the first month period will take us from uh, June and then we'll go through to July and August. So temperatures for June coming out close to average near normal temperatures being seen by can sips in June. July shows that we go warmer than average, uh, quite a warm July turns up there and then we go through into August and it looks like it's cooling down a little bit in August although still generally probably just about above average so fairly warmish summer is being predicted by the Kansas model precipitation looks like this um June comes out close to average so not a great deviation in June July when it's turning warmer it's also turning dry uh, in July so a really quite a, a warm and dry and um, nice summer month coming up in July if Kansas sits is right and then August that one starts to turn more unsettled so precipitation going above average particularly in the north near normal elsewhere so that perhaps hinting at the idea and it's there through some of the model output last month, perhaps hinting up the idea that we get a bit of a deterioration as we get through into the latter part of the summer. Next model to look at is the uh, experimental NASA model. This is the 500 bill of our height anomaly for uh, June to August, so covering the full summer period. Again, similar perhaps to um, the Brazilian model, we've got this area of above average heights across Scandinavia. Trough hinted at 
uh, being in the Atlantic, but it's fairly weak. It's not enough to go to the below average heights. It's just near normal in terms of the heights. But um, there is a trough over Scandinavia. That could be in charge, possibly. There is a ridge, I should say, over Scandinavia. That could be enough, perhaps, to give us a fairly easterly summer. If that happens, you would expect quite a warm summer. The model is hinting at uh, temperature anomalies coming out above average. Um, only weekly so, but look how warm the summer is uh, being predicted across many parts of Europe, particularly warm uh, across Scandinavia, where we've got um, that uh, ridge sitting. Uh, so quite a warm summer coming up for Europe. We're on the periphery of that, but temperatures and anomalies are coming out above average there. Uh, for the summer, just about. In terms of precipitation, that one is a weaker signal, but it's about average. I think the signal is quite weak there, but overall, perhaps hinting at being uh, just a little bit wetter than average to the north and the west of the country. There are some very pale yellow colours there uh, around the north and west. But overall, again, it isn't a strong signal. Uh, for precipitation, it's really the height anomaly and the temperature anomaly that's a stronger signal, less so for precipitation. Who van den Duel next, our good friend Hoog, and uh, what Hoog does is he uh, does analogue forecasts. So this is actually based on a model, particularly it's not a computer anyway, uh, showing this out. Who uh, has a look at sea surface temperature anomalies across the world in any given month. In this case, uh, it was in March uh, last month. Um has a look at those uh, sea surface temperature anomalies and then compares back to past years with a similar sea surface temperature anomaly and creates a forecast going forward. So let's uh, look at the temperature anomaly uh, for the summer. This is covering full summer period again and that's coming out warmer than average. So we have got a trend here. We are moving more towards the warmer side of things for this summer. Uh, last month it was very split between the warmer models and the uh, models that were cooler. This month, I think there's a very definite shift uh, taking place to a warmer than average summer. So a warm summer being seen by Hugh van der Duel in terms of the precipitation anomaly, generally hinting at being a bit wetter than average. And again, that's particularly true to the north and the west, less so elsewhere. But overall, again, a fairly unsettled summer looks probable there. CFS V2 uh, next. Now look at this. We have got a trend with this as well. Um, above average heights, terms of 700 millibar heights over, well, towards Scandinavia. There's yellow colours there uh, towards Scandinavia. Um, and not much else going on really. We're actually coming across the Atlantic, but probably coming up against that ridge and splitting going a bit like that. The ridge probably isn't strong enough to be bringing the winds consistently in from the east, but it could be enough to drag up some warmer conditions at times from the south and the east. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly. Not a great deal doing, really. Across Scandinavia, we uh, have a warm summer. You'll expect that because there's a ridge sitting up there. Um, but elsewhere, not really much of a signal. And overall, maybe a coolish sort of uh, signal, really. Really, um, I'm not quite sure why that's so, because you will think the jet stream would be splitting a bit like that um, with this we sitting over Scandinavia. But anyway, there's no real signal for temperatures for this summer. Overall, perhaps, if anything, <coughs> excuse me, again, erring on the side of being a little bit on the cooler side. The uh, precipitation anomaly, that looks drier than average. Uh, to the north and the east, so Scandinavia, again, where we've got this ridge uh, coming out drier than average, but France and much of Central Europe coming out wetter than average. So it's a bit of an odd one what the CFS is doing. I don't think it's a million miles away from perhaps giving us a warmish, but potentially maybe fairly thundery summer. Um, but uh, it's a bit odd what the model is doing there this month. If you watch CFS six months look ahead uh, last week, you'll know I was very um, befuddled by <laughs> the CFS V2. And that has carried on a little bit for um, this second summer update. Next model we'll look at is Jamstech IOD. I'll just zoom you in a little bit more so you can see this perhaps a bit uh, a bit more clearly. So um, these are the temperature anomalies, first of all, from Jamstech. Tech. Look at this again, another model going for a warmer than average summer there. Most of Northern Europe coming out warmer than average. The British Isles 
is included that uh, in that quite a warm summer above average temperatures being predicted in terms of the precipitation anomaly that is coming out drier than average as well so we've got those sandy colors there close to the uk notice interestingly quite a wet summer being predicted across most of the Europe. so quite an unusual pattern seems to be setting up here uh, for this summer but the upshot for us anyway is that it's generally a fairly warm and dry summer being predicted by the Janus Tech model wouldn't be too bad at all I don't think if you want a warm and uh, sunny summer that's consistent with last month. The Beijing Climate Centre looks like it's done a bit of a change. That was going for quite a unsettled summer last month. Um, this month, it's pushing the trough, the below average heights on the 500 mm height normally, pushing them to the north and building up above average heights from the south. So here we go again. Look at this. The temperature anomaly is going warmer than average on another model uh, that we've got very very definite shift has taken place this month to a warmer warm summer warmer than average temperature anomalies precipitation anomalies they're close to average not really all that much of a signal um if anything you would say the north is looking fairly unsettled fairly wet up there elsewhere it's a generally near normal so remember if the ridge is building up from the south the jet stream is being pushed up to the north but beijing climate center has changed from last month last month it's going for a cool and wet summer this month is going for something warmer and drier and then finally we'll have a look at the uk met so this is the sea level pressure anomaly for the summer this is june july august and um it's got uh below average pressure to the north of the country near normal pressure elsewhere <clears throat> excuse me yeah i didn't have a bit of a tickle in my throat uh for some reason um this might be could be pollen but pollen count's been usually high actually for the past couple of weeks i do suffer from hay fever a little bit anyway i digress um what's going on here is that we're bringing uh the jet stream through the country but maybe a little bit to the north you remember last month the idea from uk met was to have quite an unsettled summer but as we broke that down um, it started off fairly reasonably early summer, and then it turned very unsettled later on. Um, that summer, I've had. A, we're not going to have a look at the breakdown uh, of these uh, charts this month. I had a look at them, though, and that isn't there with quite as much uh, conviction this month. But overall, it's predicting a more unsettled summer to the northern west, drier to the south and the east. The temperature anomaly for the summer from the uk met is coming out perhaps a little bit above average but call of an average to the west and then the precipitation anomaly it's a bit messy but again probably hinting at being a little bit wetter than average overall i mean the north and west in the green colors the south and the east in the um what color would be called that i suppose sort of a lemony <laughs> color so close to average but a little bit wetter than average in the north and west a little bit drier than average uh elsewhere so it's again a little bit of a mixed bag this month but i think what we can say with fairly good uh with very good uh, agreement with these models is that there has been a shift that's taken place um and the shift i think has taken us more towards a warmer uh, a warmer summer so um we've got another update to do I'm not quite sure what's changed from uh, last month to this month, except maybe these models are backing up, are backing off, backing away from a La Nina developing in Pacific. That could be what's happened here. But I think there is a consist, uh, consistent view amongst all of these models for a warmer summer. Precipitation looks very variable amongst all these models, but overall nothing, especially wet, being predicted generally many of them are hinting but no more than that and a little bit on the drier side um 
The third and final update will be uh, next month. We'll do it at the end of May. And then we'll do our forecast, of course, uh, from Gas Overs for the summer of 2016. We'll also have some very interesting analogues from our good friend James uh, next month as well. We've already done some analogue uh, forecasting for the summer last week. Um, have a look at some more analogues as we go through uh, next month. So the final and official Gas Overs summer 2016 summer forecast will will be issued at the end of May. But uh, to sum it up for this month, it does look as though the uh, models have generally shifted towards a warmer summer compared to what we saw last month. Right, that's it for now. I've uh, gone on for far long. How long have we gone on for? It's nearly 20 minutes. Um, just say that chart that you're looking at there, I better explain this because I've noticed while I've been talking that uh, the precipitation anomaly showing May, June and July. I know people will notice that. The other ones are okay. They're June, July, August for the sea level pressure and for the temperature. But um, that precipitation uh, anomaly is May, May, June and July. So maybe as we've got a little bit of time, we could just have a look, see what precipitation only is for um, June, July, August. And that is it, actually. And it's very, uh, very similar. Um, it's wetter to the north and west, drier to the south and the east. So it makes no uh, real difference. I thought I'd better just point it out because I've been talking away. I've been, I'm not sure you noticed, but I, I was sort of going off a little bit to the side because I've noticed what I've done there. And I know people will pick up on it. So there you are. You've seen the precipitation only for the UK, mate, for summer as well. Right, that's it then. Warmer uh, trend in this uh, update. We'll see what the third and final update has to say next month. And we'll also do the summer forecast. Come back later on for um, the update for the May Day Bank Hollywood Weekend. Remember, this will be placed on the summer updates page. And you'll be able to watch it whenever you want. There'll also be a written summary uh, up later on. Right, that's all for now. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thanks for watching.